Here I am in the 2022 Toyota Prius Limited top of the line grade. This fourth generation Prius debuted for the 2016 model year and 2022 could be the last year of this generation as we look forward to a next generation which could be by the end of this year in 2022. And here in 2022 as things get more and more electrified the Prius does have a plug-in hybrid which I'm not driving that today but is this vehicle, the standard Prius, relevant in the ever-changing electrified market? And to start things off in today's video, I'm going to talk about fuel economy and then we'll update it at the end of the video when I fill up this vehicle. According to the TRIPS computers, I've put 131 miles on this vehicle, mainly just transporting my kids back and forth from school, all city driving. And the weather's been really, really good here in Florida. It's winter time, go figure. But it's telling me I'm getting 72.6 miles per gallon over 132 miles. That is just ridiculous. And I didn't expect that sort of fuel economy. I drove the Corolla Hybrid earlier this year, or should I say in, in the summer of last year and that vehicle got me over 65 miles per gallon and here in the prius focusing mainly on city driving ac off for the most part i'm getting over 72 miles per gallon we'll test that at the end we'll fill it up and get an actual reading i'm going to take it on the highway in this review to tell you my highway impressions and also to kind of average out the fuel economy because i've been driving only city so far and to get that sort of crazy fuel economy, there is a tiny 1.8 liter four cylinder that the Prius has had for many generations now. Uh, it produces 121 horsepower combined in this electrified setup. It's not inspiring, but let me tell you, this setup over the years has become so refined, I often don't know whether the gasoline engine is on or off. I can look at the MID up here, which is centrally located. I wish it was a little bit further to the left, but I do have a heads up display in this model. So right now I am running in full electric and that'll tell me by a green EV indicator on the MID. I'm not gonna talk about the exterior. If you wanna learn more about that, watch my walk around where I compare this model to my 2012 Prius. But let's talk about the interior where this limited model is actually more limited than the lesser priced models in the Prius lineup. But it all starts with this touchscreen. If the sun is up, this touchscreen is hard to see. It's extremely glary. It reflects very poorly. It's not optically bonded like the new, let's say, Toyota interface or Lexus interface. This thing is just a nightmare. Not only that, I don't have volume knobs. I don't have tuning knobs like you would get on the lesser models and for me as an android user when you go to this huge screen you don't get android auto so it's just a big disappointment in this vehicle initial impressions are cool i got a big screen it's i don't know evolved like a tesla no it's it's uh it's a red herring it is not what it looks like it's going to be and most of the time i just leave uh the energy monitor on which you have different screens of the energy monitor which is kind of cool i could keep griping on the screen but what does this vehicle other than the screen excel at well the quality of materials is decent in here there's more soft touch materials compared to my 2012 for example i don't know if the build quality is as good and there's a couple of reasons for that every once in a while while i'm driving i hear the right side of the dash or somewhere around the door panel on the right hand side of the vehicle creaking and rattling a little bit and then the seat is rattly, the passenger seat up here. So if I hit a bump, you'll hear this. Hopefully the mic microphone picked it up for you, but it's completely unnecessarily, unnecessary rattling for a brand new car. Now in this limited model, you get a lot of features. You get the JBL sound system, which is pretty decent. You get a wireless charger. You have high and low heated front seats. I have a heated steering wheel. Standard on all the Priuses is Toyota Safety Sense, which has a radar cruise control, lane keep assist, uh, collision assistance. Now this limited also has parking assist. And while it's cool to have the extra proximity sensors around the car, to me, it's worthless because one, I personally don't parallel park very often. It's very rare. And two, I would completely trade that system for a 360 camera, which you don't have the option in this vehicle. This LS 400 in front of me looks really well kept. <laughs> the brake light on the bottom left though is out. 
that should be a really simple inexpensive fix but anyways back to the prius the rear leg room is like the same in my 2012 which is actually pretty good for a compact car lots of cargo space a little bit more than my 2012 prius but at the expense of a spare tire there's no spare tire in the model the limited model i'm driving right now we have quick chargers in the back seat, but no quick chargers up in the front seat. In fact, outside of the wireless charger, the only charger up in the front is a standard USB charger. And that's where you would connect your car through wire, uh, wire to CarPlay, not Android Auto. Remember I said that's not even available here. So I tend to plug my phone in through the back USBs to charge it quicker than it does up here. And just going over those bumps back there, I heard the seat rattle. The heads-up display is really high quality. Uh, it's color heads-up display. If you have a navigation in the big screen here, the turn-by-turn -turn will pop up also on uh, the heads-up display. So it is a really, I would give it an A. It's not the best heads-up display I've seen. That would be for like the Lexus NX luxury grade, but I'm telling you, this one is really fantastic. And compared to my 2012 Prius, the brake pedal, even though it's not like perfect by any means it's so much better it's much more linear you can tell what the car is doing all the time through its combination braking so that's a good thing and then also this the handling is a lot better i feel like in my car there's a lot more body roll and i feel like you do sit up a little bit higher in the 2012 prius compared to this one so the center of gravity feels like it's lower in this vehicle and therefore the turning is just a little bit better a little bit quicker to turn in and I mentioned this vehicle has a ton of proximity sensors on it, which is good if you're parking in tight places or if you wanna use the parallel parking feature, but it has a drawback. And when you get close to vehicles, let's say in your drive-through, or for me, when I'm in car line picking up my kids, the proximity sensors will go off and you can't silence them with a button on the steering wheel like you can a lot of other Toyota and Lexus vehicles. It'll keep beeping at you until either the car in front of you moves or you disable it through the MID. And that's what I have to do. I was in Dunkin' Donuts this morning and I had to disable it because it was driving me nuts as I was going through the Dunkin' Donuts line. I love how efficient the new air conditioning systems are on Toyota's Priuses and hybrids for that matter because if I press this button here, my cabin's completely cooled off and no it's not that hot outside it's around 70 degrees but i have the fans on uh pretty strong here and it's only at a like one to two bars of battery usage for the ac and we're segmenting straight into the interstate here and this is uh it's prime time now i, I have driving modes here um i can go to power mode but even I like what am I supposed to do even if I want to floor this vehicle I can't because the Prius is keeping up with traffic I mean I'm only going 45 so yeah there's a lot of snowbirds down in, down here where they merge into the interstate at like 55 miles an hour and when I put into power mode it just makes the gas pedal more sensitive and that's not necessarily a good thing in something like a Prius because uh, it's all about fuel economy in this car. All right, now that I'm up to speed at 70 miles an hour, let's talk about sound quality here. A good amount of road noise and a decent amount of ambient noise as well. I really didn't hear that Venza passing me there, but it sounds like it's just white noise. It doesn't sound like particular wind noise for example it's kind of harder to explain now i mentioned this car does creak and rattle a little bit i hear something over on this side as well as on the right side of the vehicle now that we're up to speed steering assist is active as well as lane keep assist so you know well let's see how it does around this really mild turn here on the freeway I, like i expected it's handling it just fine but it's gonna remind me to put my hands on the steering wheel here in a little bit. Yep, even comes up on the heads up display with a bright orange icon to put your hands back on the steering wheel. And to be honest, I was hoping that this vehicle would be noticeably more quiet than the Corolla Hybrid, and I can't say that it is. It's definitely quieter, but like, is it worth the price sort of quieter? Absolutely not. It's not Lexus sort of quietness, for example. And unlike my car, this vehicle does like to hang out in EV mode a lot longer. Part of that is because it has a brand new battery and that battery chemistry is lithium ion. So it is a lot more potent 
for a longer period of time than the nickel metal hydride in my 10 year old car. So I've seen it go in full EV mode as fast as 55 miles an hour. I know it can do faster than that. If the conditions are right, let's say you're going downhill or something like that, which there are no downhills in Florida or uphills for that matter. And if the conditions are right, this vehicle will accelerate under full electric power. I've seen up to around 30, 35 miles an hour if traffic's going really, really slow. So that's something my Prius would be at least in its current state is impossible to do. I just discovered that that rattling from the seat is coming from the plastic seat belt portion right here, this portion rattling against the, the plastic B pillar of the vehicle. And that wouldn't be hard to fix. You just put some felt or something either on this clip or where the seatbelt naturally rests on this B pillar. Unfortunately, unless you have this seatbelt fixed into the fastener, the seatbelt fastener, you're going to hear that rattle a lot. Well, you could probably remedy it yourself by putting some felt or duct tape in that area yourself. But to me, that's unacceptable out of the factory. And we're just gonna floor it. <laughs> this is the first time I've floored it. And there's 50, there's 60. I mean, people say it's slow. There's 70, I'm already up to speed well before uh, I have to merge. So you can probably get this thing up to 85 miles an hour or so before you have to merge on most interstates. Just pulled into the gas station. The clock says I'm getting 71.6 after my interstate run combined over the last 161 miles. Let's see how accurate the computer is. Okay, I just put 2.526 gallons in the vehicle. So 161 gallons divided by the 2.526 gallons I put into it. If I round up to the nearest hundredth, it'll get us uh, 64 miles per gallon. So the clock is really far off. It's telling me 71.6, but in actuality, it was 64 miles per gallon or 63.97. All right, for the 2022 Prius Limited, skip this grade. Don't spend all the extra money for the, the parallel parking system, which you're never gonna use. Uh, it doesn't have 360 camera, unfortunately. This big screen is impressive at first glance, but in functionality, it's a nightmare. No knobs, no uh, heating and cooling buttons for climate control other than touch capacitive temperature control. Anyways, I could just go on about this screen without Android Auto. Get a lesser tier that has Android Auto, spend less money if you really want a Prius. I mean, the hatchback functionality of pulling down the seats is one of the big draws for this vehicle over something like the Corolla Hybrid. The Corolla Hybrid uh, is kind of a bargain basement hybrid for Toyota and it gets really good fuel economy, roughly the same as this vehicle. So, I mean, it has the same fuel, uh, same powertrain as well. So unless you needed the all wheel drive Prius over the Corolla Hybrid, yeah, there's not much to, to bring you to the Prius unless you like the camper ability of the fold down seats and the hatchback of the Prius. And not only is a Corolla Hybrid out there and costs less than most trims of the Prius, uh, you have the RAV4 hybrid, which gets 40 miles per gallon, not as good as a 60, but yeah, more utility and in that crossover seduction. You have the Camry hybrid, which will be a little bit more quiet and probably a better touring vehicle, especially going to take this vehicle on the highway should be a tad bit more quiet, I would think. Here in 2022, as Toyota is going to be bringing out their first mass produced fully electric vehicle, the BZ4X by the end of the year. Toyota is also bringing out, uh, if things aren't backed up by supply chains, they'll also be bringing out the brand new redesigned uh, fifth generation Prius. And there's, well, for, oh no, oh no, it did it. I'm too close to this van and there's no way for me to silence the proximity controls unless I flip through the menus here. Ah, okay, here we are. Oh my gosh, it's a complete, nightmare that you can't silence it unless you want to turn it off. Anyways, new Prius out by the end of the year and Toyota almost needs to make, needs to make it plug-in hybrid only at this point to keep it relevant because the Corolla hybrid does everything that this vehicle does 
uh, just at a cheaper tier. So if the Prius is gonna continue to be that more premium hybrid in their lineup, it should probably be like a Prius Prime only. That's just my guess. That's just what I would like to see. Also, I'd like to see more sportiness. Look, the RAV4 Prime is an absolute hoot. Zero to 60, under six seconds, over 300 horse. It's it's quick and it has all wheel drive. So that's what the, the Prius needs, that sort of prime excitement for this next generation. It needs to drive a little bit more fun. This vehicle is not terrible at driving the brake pedal and the handling has gotten better over the years but it's still not inspiring by any means the, the most inspiring aspect of this car is how far can i push the miles per gallon which i've been doing no ac flat roads good weather and the best i've been got was 64 which is phenomenal which is six to seven miles per gallon less than what the clock is telling me and the prius is still arguably the one of the best executed hybrids out there it's so smooth you rarely experience the engine coming on you rarely hear the engine or feel the engine they've completely mellowed the thing out to make it more electric vehicle like it's more efficient than it's ever been uh, it's as practical as it's ever been hopefully you can find a spare tire in the trim that you want because this limited doesn't have it and like i said as long as you don't go with this limited trim so you can get a more functional touchscreen as well as a more functional user interface with climate control buttons and volume knobs and tuning knobs. That's the way to go. Save some money, save yourself the headache with this big screen, or just go for other Toyota <laughs> hybrid options within the lineup so you don't have to deal with the funky looks and the stigma that comes along with driving a Prius. Uh, I was driving this back from my kid's school following another Prius and it said on the window or on the back of the vehicle, cool Prius said nobody so the prius still isn't cool and hopefully toyota can fix out the next generation it's a great vehicle for what it is it's efficient uh, it's very smooth it's predictable but it's hamstrung in this limited grade but anyways i'll end it there i'll see you guys down below what you think of the prius in this limited grade for 2022 can't wait to see what toyota has around the corner for the next generation and i'm keeping my fingers crossed for some excitement coming to the prius here this year with a redesign anyways i'm gonna end it there if you enjoyed today's video smash the like button subscribe for more toyota all japanese and korean news updates and reviews like this check in the next one peace out